All right, what is up, guys? Vivi back with another video, um, another flesh and blood video. This time we're going to be going over um, a little bit of the stuff that Viscerai got. Uh, he didn't get a lot this set, unfortunately. Very sad to be a Viscerai player. But I am going to go over some of these cars that are coming out with Dust Till Dawn and kind of rate them. This is going to be kind of like a, a preview style video. I'm going to be going over the Viscerai abilities down here at the bottom, as well as um, basically what's left in this part of the set, like all of these remaining cards down here, because this is like the, um, you know, generics and some of the tokens, of course. Those just look cool, very nice. Some generic equipment down here and things like that. I'm not going to go over the Illusionist stuff down here. Uh, I'll have to leave that for another video if I choose to go over the Illusionist stuff. Uh, but I will say this, currently I'm only looking at going over Viscerai and Vincet. So, uh, but, but only Viscerai, Viscerai in this video and the generic cards. So let me just make sure there's no other generic cards randomly laying around. Like there's the Vincet stuff coming up here. Vincet, some of the, the Brute Shadow stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty, and then this is all the light stuff. Very cool. You got like this uh, light versus darkness, right? Dude, that Celestial Reprimand looks very cool. Okay. The art is starting to impress me a lot in this game. I actually didn't like the art in this game when I first uh, got into it. And when I say I didn't like the art, I maybe didn't like the the borders as much. Now, by the way, I'd never seen this prism one. This looks incredible. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I had never seen uh, cards with these borders that are as cluttered as this, I felt like. Like, they're just so... Maybe not cluttered, but unique. It, I just didn't like it for some reason. But as, the, as it goes on, man, I'm looking at some of these cards like, man, this art is unreal now. It's, it's really starting to grow on me. I, I, did, I did not like it at first. I like stuff like this. I really like stuff like this. But it was something about before I just didn't care. It may be more like stuff like this that I didn't care for. This is, you know, I don't know. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying I didn't I didn't have a personal preference towards it. Okay, let's go back down down to the dark side down here. Okay, I'm a Vincent, uh, excuse me, I'm a Viscerai player. But after looking at some of these cards, I will probably soon be a um, a Vincent player. But let's go through let's go through the Rune Blade uh, cards first and the generics, and that's what this video will be focused on. It'll kind of be a part two to my other video that I did on Flesh and Blood on uh, Viscerai, and I'm going to kind of talk about um, these these uh, these two cards in particular: Bequest the Vast Beyond and Runic Reckoning. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about Dyadic Carapace and Scepter of Pain. So let's get right into it. First and foremost, let's just go straight to the, um, whoops, sorry, straight to Bequest of the Vast Beyond, the Viscerai Specialization. This is a zero cost rune blade action. Two defense, no attack. It's just an action card, not an attack action. This is a Viscerai Specialization. So you may only have this in your deck if your hero is Viscerai, period, right? The next rune blade attack action card you play this turn costs one less to play for each rune chant you control. Okay, so let's talk about like the perks of this. This is really good for uh, very specific cards. Uh, let me go ahead and go over some of them here. I got this up for me so I can just look up cards as needed. Uh, where's the little sideboard? Here we go. I got this as like my quote unquote sideboard. Um, you know, the sideboard of it, let me, let me, uh, of, of the deck that I went over in the previous video. Okay, attack action cards. Let's just look up Rune Blade ones. Search. Whoops. What happened to it? <laughs> Did I mess it up? I don't know. We'll go. All right, let's just do it like this. Okay. So Aether Slash. Um, so cards. So let's think about cards that this could help. Amplify already does what it does. Aether Slash is a little bit weak in my opinion because it's a one for four. Um, but, you know, again, this would make it a zero for four. And when Aether Slash attacks, if a non-attack action card was pitched to play it, deal one arcane damage to any target. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Sorry about that. <clears throat> My voice is drying out a little tiny bit here. Um, so for this card, it would be decent, right? And you would only need... What was it? The next Rune Blade attack action card you play this turn costs one less to play for each Rune Chant you control. So it would basically make this for free for just one rune champ being on the board. So, okay, that's that's not horrible, right? It's not terrible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Arcanic Crackle, this already does, you know, this is already a zero for three, deal one arcane. Arcanite Ascendancy, we already kind of know what that does. Now, one question I have about this ability, 
Let me leave it up like this. <coughs> the... <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness gracious. So so frustrating. The quest of the vast beyond. It says the next room blade attack action card you play this turn costs one less to play for each room chain you control. So does this double up with abilities that already have this? Abilities like let me move this all the way to here because I keep actually hitting that. So, for example, Arcanine Ascendancy costs one less to play for each rune chant I control. So, if I have three, let's just say I have three rune chants down, and then I play Bequest the Vast Beyond, which says the next rune blade attack action card I play this turn costs one less to play for each rune chant I control. So, it'll cost three less from that. Well, this will also cost three less. Where is it? Arcanine Ascendancy will also cost three less per its own ability. So does that allow me to cast this with only three rune chants down for free? If I go, you know, if I go uh, Bequest the, the Vast Beyond, BVB, I guess I'm going to call it from now on, and then Arcanine Ascendancy? Someone answer me in the comments below if you know or not, because I, I don't actually know, I'm not sure. Uh, Consuming Volition would only would cost zero with this kind of card. That's pretty nice, right? Cryptic Crossing, it would cost zero potentially, but the problem is... It, this goes off what you pitch in order for it to be good. I mean, it could just be a zero for six, right, with this kind of card, but not have that effect. So I, I don't know. You know, it's it's not, the effect has if an attack action card and a non-attack action card were pitched to play crossing, it has the first time this deals damage to the defending hero. They discard a card, you draw a card. So it's not really great with this. You're, you're just it's basically a zero for six, and we already have that. Uh, Deathly duet. It would be a. Uh, it'd be pretty decent with this one. I feel like because this would now be like a. Well, no, again, Cryptic Crossing and Deathly Duet, you want to discard specific cards to get their effects. So making the card free with a Bequest of the Beyond, vast, be, the Bequest of the Vast Beyond, doesn't seem that good to me. Drawn to the Dark Dimension can already be free, uh, just depending on how many Rune Chants you control. Dread Triptych can be free now. That's that's not bad, right? That's not horrible. But again... Um, no, no, sorry. This one, yeah. This So this would actually be very good with it. Drowning Dire also would be very good, in my opinion, with this. Because if this was a zero cost deal five dominate, that's very good. And it says if you have played or created an aura this turn, Drowning Dire gains dominate. So remember, as you play uh, this card, this Bequest of Vast Beyond, and then as you play, so that's your non-attack action... <clears throat> then you play Drowning Dire. This is your room, uh, your next Rune Blade action. This will create a token per Viscerai, and it will then turn on Dominate. Drowning Dire will gain Dominate. Uh, so when when Drowning Dire hits, you may put a non-attack action card from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck. So that yeah, that could potentially be very strong. You know, if, if this be, all of a sudden becomes a zero cost five uh, five physical Dominate, that's not bad. <clears throat> and remember, you'll you'll have to have at least two um, rune blades in play already for this to be free through your bequest of the vast beyond, right? Because this says the next rune blade attack action card you play this turn, the next rune blade attack action card you play this turn costs one less to play for each rune chain you control. So that would then come in for like seven, right? It would be like a um, you know, coming in for seven with dominate, you know, two, two uh, arcane and then five physical, and that would create your rune chant for next turn to, to keep the flow going. Um, but yeah. The biggest problem I have, we're going to keep going over some of these. My biggest problem with this card is that it doesn't give the, the, the card go again. Like, I wish it said that, okay, the next rune blade attack extra you play this turn costs one less to play for each rune chant you control. And then, or or, the, or, the, or put like then, if it costs zero to play, it gains go again, or or you know words something like that. Because as is, this does seem a little lackluster to me, because it just it ends your turn after you do that. Now yes, you'll be able to combo this with like uh, suede hide the uh, creepers probably I don't know, but with Sutcliffe suede suede hides. Destroy Sutcliffe's Wade Hides, target attack action card gains go again, and then activate this ability only if you have played a non-attack action card this turn. Well, guess what? That's what this is. That's what Bequest is. So let, let's keep going for a second. Uh, meet and greet. Um, this would cost a zero with it. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think meet and greet would actually gain quite a bit from, from playing Bequest the Vast Beyond. Because if you already have one Rune Chant down, in order to do meet and greets ability, 
let's see, if you have dealt or deal arcane damage to an opposing hero this turn, meet and greet gains go again. So if you have like two or three down, two or three rune chance down, and if any of those go through by playing meet and greet, which will generate another one, by the way, you know, because of, uh, oops, because of using Bequest of the Vast Beyond before it, th then your meet and greets will basically have go again and create a rune chant. Um, well, not necessarily uh, create the rune chant from her ability, but create one from playing the the non-attack action and then a rune blade action. Okay, very interesting. <clears throat> so, so this would be pretty decent with it, I'm not going to lie. Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath? I don't know about this one with it. Like I said, I need to know if what I said works. I need to know that if I have five rune chants down, and then I play the quest of the Vast Beyond... Will my blade, bl Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath now cost free? Because Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath costs one less to play for each rune chant I control on the card itself and per Bequest of the Vast Beyond's ability. So I need to know that. If anyone knows in the comment section below, please tell me. I, I don't actually know if that interaction works the way I think it does. So if it does, though, that will be incredible for Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath. That might end up becoming a three of. Um, Reek of Corruption, this could be pretty good. If you have played or created an aura this turn, Reek of Corruption gains. When this hits a hero, they discard a card. This could potentially be free, guys. This could potentially be free if you have two rune chants with your Bequest of the Vast Beyond. Uh, rune Flash is basically not affected at all. It, it's our, it already is exactly what it is. It, it, it doesn't get really any kind of benefit. Runic Reclamation could end up being free, which is very nice. So that would be very nice in this. I, again, I think, man, if it does what I what I if it does what I think it does, where it it, it can reduce the cost twice of certain cards. Like I said, with if I if Bequest of the Vast Beyond reduces the cost of Ninth Play of the Blood Oath and Ninth Play of the Blood Oath, Blood Oath also reduces the cost, that could be so insane. Like that could be like I said, all of a sudden you're gonna have a deck that has like three Ninth Play of the Blood Oath, three Runic Reclamation. Three Shrill of Skull form, obviously. We, we would already be running that. Just an extremely hard-hitting deck. That'd be interesting. So, again, if someone knows if it works like that, please tell me in the comment section below. Okay, so Running Reclamation would be really solid in, the, in a deck like this. Shrill of Skull form. Or not in a deck like this. In a, in a deck that runs uh, the Quest of the Vast Beyond. Because if you have three runes down, well, all of a sudden, your Running Reclamation is hitting basically for 10 damage at zero cost. Uh, Shrill of Skull form. In, it would end up being a zero cost deal seven, you know, but it doesn't have go again like it would with Malveron. So that, that is kind of a, you know, eh, you know, kind of <laughs> not sure. Uh, Malveron just can't be replaced with this card, but can you add it alongside Malveron? Probably to make it really good. Um, same idea with this one. This could potentially be zero cost when you attack with Singeing Steel Blade, deal an arcane damage to a target hero. So it'd be a zero cost deal five, right? Four physical, one arcane. Not bad. Spellblade Assault and Shrill of Skull Form, I feel like, are the biggest winners of a card like this. Because if these are free, you know, that, that does allow for a lot of shenanigans. A lot of... It allows you to remain... Uh, it, it allows you to, to maintain tempo very, very strong. It's very strong at allowing you to maintain tempo. Uh, Spellblade Strike, this is fine as well. This is like your Spellblade Assault um, Light, right? Instead of creating uh, two rune chants, this one creates one rune chant. So, very good. Uh, Swarming Gloom Veil will be unaffected by it, ultimately. Okay, Vexing Malice. This would end up being a, a zero cost. Deal three and deal two. So, that's, you know, not bad. And then now we get to the cards that are just, um, you know, uh, generic, the generic stuff. So, okay, ultimately I think this card is probably a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. If I were to rate this card out of 10, let me go back to full screen. Um, sorry, we had to go through like every Runeblade card with this because it is a Viscerai Specialization. I don't plan on doing that with every card, don't worry. Uh, but with it being a Viscerai Specialization, we need to see how this interacts with Viscerai. And the ability to make your next Runeblade attack action card you play cost one less for each rune chant you control is very, very powerful, okay? And like I said, if it also doubles up with the already existing effects on cards like Ninth Blade of the Blood Oath and Arknight Ascendancy, then this card actually might be playable. 
but I don't know. I don't know if it does or not. I'll have to ask like a judge on a ruling on that. Because if it does, like I said, that, that that's real good. That that could, like I said, now all of a sudden, you know, an insane turn could be okay. Uh, Bequest, uh, the the vast beyond. Hang on, hang on, no, 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 no. It, it would have to be a little bit off. Hang on. So if you did like a rune flash at the beginning of the turn and then bequest the vast beyond into a revel. Yeah, then then I think it would work. It's hard to say. I don't know. I don't want to try to come with combos on the fly like that, but I think you guys kind of see where I'm going. You could probably get off some really easy uh, Ninth Blade of the Blood Oaths with, with Bequest of the Vast Beyond if it works the way we say it does. So we got to keep that in mind. I'm, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 because it, it also makes certain cards that are kind of unplayable right now. I think it makes them pretty playable and it improves on cards that are already playable like Shrill Skull Form. Well, if you have 9 Malvron Skies in your deck and then 3 Bequest and then 3 Lead the Charge, well, all of a sudden, you know, you have 15 cards that are going to allow you to gain some type of momentum. Some are better than others. As we know, Malvron Skies is Malvron Skies, right? <laughs> it is what it is. But this is one another option, potentially, uh, if, if we have to go that route. So I, I think it's a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. I, I, I'm a little more biased towards this, right? So I get a 7 out of 10. I think most players are probably lean closer to 6 out of 10. But, but yeah, not bad. Because at worst, at worst, it's a zero cost go again Runeblade action. So now you can just start up your Viscerai triggers, right? That's at worst, it's that. So there's no way it can be below a five out of ten. I feel like even 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 though it only has two defense. So, all right, let's keep going. Runic Reckoning. This costs one less to play for each rune chain you control. So even though it is a one cost, it's probably realistically going to be a zero cost. It's a Runeblade action with go again. The next Runeblade attack action card you play this turn gets plus three and go again. Okay, I've got some problems with this um, right away. This is this is Oath of the Arc Knight, right? This this is literally just um, turn this off, turn this off. Okay. So Oath of the Arc Knight is your next Rune Blade attack. This turn gains plus three physical. Create a Rune Chant token. Go again. So okay, it's not the exact same. It's kind of the, it, it, it's a it's going in the opposite direction, right? So instead of trying to create a Rune Chant, this is trying to become cheaper from having Rune Chants already. And then it's saying that they they both give the your next Rune Blade attack is plus three physical. Even though this one says your next Rune Blade attack action card gets plus three, and Oath of the Arknight is your next Rune Blade attack this turn gains plus three. So I wonder if this also um, procs off of like a Nebula Blade or something. I don't know. Y'all tell y'all tell me what y'all think about that, or if I'm crazy if I'm wrong. <laughs> Maybe it means the exact same thing. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so this they both have go again. Oath costs two. This one potentially costs zero. Oath creates a rune chant token. This doesn't. Um, unless it's like off of Viscerai trigger that they, they both can trigger. But then this, and then they both have plus three. And what about Oath of the Ark? Is it a three as well? Yeah, it's a three defense as well. So, I mean, ultimately, maybe this is just a better version of Oath of the Ark Knight. Because instead of generating a rune chant token, which you're probably going to generate anyway, through, you know, you'll pro both of these are probably going to end up generating a rune chant token, right? Like this, like the uh, Oath of the Ark Knight literally does it. And this one will after you play your next ability. Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like these cards are literally the exact same card. Just th they're different directions. This is potentially a zero cost that gives a attack action plus three. And, and this has go again. Whereas Oath of the Ark Knight is a two cost, but it creates a rune chant as soon as you play it. And gives plus three. And they both can be uh, d d defensed. Uh, Use as defense for three. Ah, uh, I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think of this card. I'm going five out of ten. I do not think this card is good at all. But I don't think it's bad either. I just don't think this card... It, it's almost an irrelevant card to me. The next Runeblade attack action card you, you play this turn gets plus three. 
See, it's almost like, what do you want to do? Do you want to make the card cost less? Or do you want to make the card stronger? Because you're probably not going to be allowed to do both. Right? Like, with, with the Bequest of the Fast Beyond, this is at least going to allow me to play more. Whereas this is going to allow me to just hit harder one time. Ah, I don't know, man. It, it's a tough call. Y'all see where I'm torn? Like, there are... There are different scenarios in which each one is very good. Like, there's a scenario where Bequest of the Vast Beyond is extremely good. There's a scenario where Runic Reckoning is extremely good. And there's a scenario, believe it or not, where Oath of the Arcanine is good. But the, the thing that really holds this back is it costs two. So I will say that right away. I'm going to have to say that Runic Reckoning is better than Oath of the Arcanine because this is potentially and more than likely free. Um, it doesn't create a rune chant on play, but that's okay. That's not really how Viscerai runs right now. We don't need the, we don't need Oath of the Arc Knight for the create a rune chant, right? We need it for the rune blade action that goes again, and this is free. So I'm going to give this a 6.5 or a 7 as well. I'm going to give this the exact same score as I gave Bequest of the Vast Beyond. I place it in the exact same category as that card. So, okay, let's keep going. The rest won't take too long. We'll just kind of go through these next ones. Scepter Pain we'll talk about real quick because it is a rune blade weapon. Once per turn action, pay two, deal one arcane damage to any opposing target. Create a rune chant token for each damage dealt this way. So with any form of arcane barrier, they can stop, they can prevent this from creating a rune chant. And it does cost you two resources. Oof, that, that is brutal, man. Um, does anyone know if there's a way to get this to deal more than one arcane damage? Because this is also not an attack. Right? Like, see how Decimator Great Axe is a, is like, this is a warrior axe, a warrior weapon, axe, two-hander, once per turn action, pay three to attack. This one doesn't pay two to attack. It pays two to deal one arcane damage to any opposing target. And then you create a rune chant token for each damage dealt this way. So let me see something real quick, guys. I'm sorry. We do got to kind of look at this real quick. Why isn't this searching? There we go. Target sword attack gains go again. Target attack action card gains plus one. Target club or hammer weapon attack. Razor reflex is sword or dagger. Thrust is sword. Yeah, I don't think we can make this thing deal more. Where am I? There we go. Once per turn action, pay two, deal one arcane damage to any opposing target create a rune chant token for each damage dealt this way so is it basically just it deals one or it doesn't and if it deals the damage then you get an, a rune chant token y'all tell me in the comments below if, I, if, I, if i'm wrong I, i'm kind of kind of confused on that it'd, it'd be nice to um to be able to make this deal more damage <laughs> that's all I'm, that's all i'm thinking y'all tell me if y'all think of anything but i think it just kind of is as is what it is and paying two for that effect, that that is that is steep. That is a steep cost for what you're getting. Um, not too not too um, thrilled about this one. I'm gonna give this like a, a five out of ten or a four out of ten. I don't even know if this is playable. Yeah, like paying two, got paying two for this, and it doesn't have go again. By the way, it's a once per turn action. So I don't, yeah, I don't know, guys. This might be like a three out of ten. Y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments below. All right, Dyadic Carapace, or Dyadic Carapace. This is a Arcane Barrier 2 Rune Blade chest equipment that has temper. So when the combat chain closes, if this defended, put a minus one armor counter on it. And then if it has zero armor counters left, just destroy it. And it has Arcane Barrier 2. If your hero would be dealt Arcane Damage, you may pay two to prevent two of that damage. So there you go. Uh, this is just an insanely defensive... Um, chest piece this is solid i i have no complaints with this i'm going to give it a 7 out of 10 maybe even a 7.5 out of 10 i don't really know how to grade the chest pieces because like for for what i'm going for i will always rather have a fine doll spring tunic or i would rather have a aether ironweed just straight up aether ironweed which is you know yeah it's not as defensive as what we just saw but it has the ability to be a little more offensive, right? Destroy Aether Ironweave to gain two resources. Activate this ability only if you have played an attack action card and a non-attack action card this turn. Go again. So, like, I, I kind of would still rather have this for my for my aggro list here. Uh, but if maybe if I'm going against another aggro deck, 
maybe I would swap this in because it's just more defensive. I, I don't know. Y'all, y'all tell me what you think about this. I think this is solid, though. I don't think it's anything less than a 7 out of 10. Solid. Okay. We're going to spe- skip past the Illusionist the illusionist stuff, the Shapeshifter stuff. stuff. Um, maybe, maybe in another video I'll cover this. Um, just to be heads, uh, heads up with you, or to give you all a heads up, I only plan on covering Vinset and Viscerai. Um, I'm still getting into Flesh and Blood and certain... <clears throat> I don't know. I might still... We'll see. I, I still might go, go over the light stuff because it does look cool. It is interesting and it's a good way to learn the cards for me. But we'll see. Y- y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments below if, if y'all if y'all think I should or shouldn't. I don't know. Yeah, either way, I may, I may not. It, it we'll, we'll just see. I, I'd like to know what y'all think about it though in general if, if y'all care for these kind of videos. Okay, so let's go over Crown of Providence. It looks like they're reprinting this, correct? I, I believe that's what this means. Yeah, because it actually has a number. Yeah, this is DTD, Dust Till Dawn 220, and this is DTD, Dust Till Dawn 221. So it looks like they are reprinting Crown of Providence, if, if I'm understanding this correctly. That's nice. We already know what that does. I'm not going to go over it. Um, yeah, that card's basically like a 10 out of 10. It's one of the best head equipments you can get in the game, right? Uh, but that's nice. They're reprinting this. Um, Frontline Helm. At the beginning of your t- end phase... Okay, wait a minute. At the beginning of your end phase, put a minus one armor counter on this, and then blade break when this combat chain closes, if this defended, destroy it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what is going on here? At the beginning of your end phase, put a minus one armor counter on this. So maybe this is meant to stop a lot of early aggression. I don't know. Y'all tell me if I'm if I'm understanding that correctly, but are they are these all the same? Frontline plating? Yeah, two, two they're all two armor and they all lose one armor at the beginning of your turn. So it looks like this is just going to be a really strong uh, anti-rush style of um, equipment, right? Because you're basically saying, I'm going to block like six to eight of your incoming damage on turn one and two, right? I'm going to block somewhere between like five and eight, I guess, realistically. I'm going to block somewhere between five and eight damage from your opening turn from my armor so I don't have to throw away all the cards in my hand. Seems good. Hey, I'll give this a, um, I'll give this a 5 out of 10. This is just extremely good and average. Okay, Sensor. This is a generic action attack. Cost 1 for 5 physical. It defends for 3. And when this hits a hero, name a card, they can't play the name card until the end of their next turn. Okay, so they like to add these. I feel like, you know, like th- this is kind of like your uh, humble. Let me, uh, oops. So this is like your humble, where when this hits a hero, that the hero loses all abilities until the end of their next turn. Um, it's also like, uh, oh gosh, what is it? There's one other card that's like it. Um, hang on, I gotta find it real quick, or it's gonna drive me crazy. It, it's just like humble. Is it erase face? Yeah. When erase face hits a hero, cards and tokens they own lose all class and talent types until the end of their um, next turn. I, I like cards like this. I think they have a place. I'm, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 because it's just a solid meta card, right? It's just meant to kind of stop someone from doing something. These these have a place in the game. They need to be there. Looks very much like a shadow card to me. This should have been a Rune Blade or shadow card. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, Mischievous Meeps. we got a one-cost generic action attack here. Two physical uh, and two defense. When this hits a hero, gain control of an item with cost two or less they control. Otherwise, draw a card. Go again. Wow. So, item. So, let's go ahead and look at some items, guys. I mean, we we got some of those over here. These are all items. Okay. And these are pretty much... They're all two or less. I I I think pretty much every item is like two or less, ultimately, of of the generic stuff. So this could be pretty nasty if you steal something like their time snap potion, right? That could be pretty nasty if you if you take a time snap potion. Like if if you push this thing over the threshold with something like a something like a um, what's it called? Um, maybe a d- d- would pummel work on this? Wait, no, no, no. I think pummel is um, specifically. Whoops, pummel is um, yeah. Target attack actually probably cost two or greater. Wait, what about blue pump? No. Maybe Razor Reflexes. Target attack action probably costs one or less gains plus. So it's a Razor Reflex. <laughs> so maybe pump this over with Razor Reflex. Man, you could really get under someone's skin with something like that. 
right? Am, am I understanding that correctly? Target attack action card with cost one or less. Yeah. Target attack. Yeah. Attack action card with one or less. So there you go. That, that would put this thing at a, uh, a five. At reaction timing, you know. And then who knows if you have something else, some type of like... Um, um, what would they call the scalers? Hang on, I think they're called uh, Snapdragon scalers. No, 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 no. They're the um, oh gosh, the um, is it gloves? No, no, no. What are they called? Hand arms. It's the uh, sorry guys. Where are they? Oh, I think they're only for Ninja. Never mind. It's it's only for Ninja. I'll bring it up real quick. I was thinking of the... Um, where's my Dex at? There we go. Dex, my Dex. I'm just going to grab these real quick. It was the um, Breaking Scales. If you have a card like Breaking Scales where you can destroy it to target attack X card. Oh, this is with combos. No, never mind. It wouldn't even work with that card. <laughs> I'm crazy, guys. Scratch all that. Anyway, if you have a card like that, though, where you can give it plus one... Man, you can really get some um, some mileage out of this, I think, against these uh, against decks that run a lot of items. Really cool. Mischievous Meeps. Very cool card. I like it. I'm just going to give it a 5 out of 10. I don't think this is crazy. It's probably just a sideboard card. Hold the line. Zero cost, two defense. Generic defense reaction. So, okay. If the attacking hero has drawn two or more cards this turn, prevent the next three damage that would be dealt to your hero this turn. So, okay, I mean, I, I, I think this is just a 5 out of 10. I don't think many decks, well, it depends on the deck, right? It does depend on the deck. I don't think many decks are going to be able to draw to a turn to the point where you can really reliably use this. Maybe, yeah, I don't I don't think so. I, I think I think the card's fine. I'm just going to a 5 out of 10. I, I don't think it's bad or good. I think it's just a nice average card. It'll be strong against certain decks and not against others. Hack to reality instead of back to reality. Okay, we got a one cost generic action with a two defense. Your next attack this turn gets plus two physical. Uh, plus two physical damage. The next time you hit a hero this turn, destroy a non-token aura they own with cost less than or equal to the damage dealt this way. Um, go again. Okay, so the next time you hit a hero this turn, destroy a non-token aura they own with cost less than or equal to the damage dealt this way. Go again. So it's just an anti-aura, a non-token aura. So, okay. Hang on. Like is, yeah, the Rune Blade, this is a token aura. So, wait, here's a Guardian token aura. This must be meant for something very specific. I'm sorry, guys. I actually don't know many non-token auras. Or maybe I do and I don't realize they're auras. Here's one. Chain, chains of Mephetis. Mephetis? Mephetis? I don't know. Yeah, so this is meant for very, very specific uh, cards, guys. Guys. Um, all right, sorry. We're going to go back down. Because it doesn't hit the token auras, remember, right? It, it only hits non-token auras. So, okay, I'm just going to give it a 5 out of 10. Any, any card that like is specific meta for you know, very specific things, it's just an average card made for a specific reason. So it's not like it's bad, but it's also not like it's good or game-defining. It's, it's just meant to answer uh, issues in, in, the, in the deck, or excuse me, in the format. Like, okay, we don't want this to get out of hand. Okay. <clears throat> Warmonger's Diplomacy. We got a zero cost. Check out this dude on the left in the picture. I'm sorry, guys. I, I mean, like, look at this goofy helmet. <laughs> what is that? It's like a skull or something on the guy on the left. He has to be like a necromancer or something. I'm sorry. I just, I couldn't help but notice that. That's, that's, it's cool. It's cool. It just, it just, it just looks kind of funny. Okay. Warmonger's Diplomacy. Cost zero. Three defense. Generic action. Okay, there's a red circle at the bottom that drew my eye right to it. There, this is like that the M rarity, right? That, that mythic rarity. Um, I think that's what it's called, right? Starting with the hero to your left, each hero chooses war or peace. If they choose 
war, the only actions they may play or activate during their next turn are weapon, are weapon and attack actions. If they chose peace, the only actions they may play or activate during their next turn are non-weapon, non-attack actions. So, okay. That's pretty brutal. Um, that, that can really slow down um, certain decks. Certain decks will be slowed down immensely from this, especially Runeblade decks, right? Like that. Oof, man, I, I thought that immediately. Because we always have to go non-attack into attack for our, for our, you know, stuff to really pop off. <laughs> um, that's brutal. I'm going to give this a... Uh, I want to give it like an 8 out of 10, but I think certain decks it won't matter as much against... Like, more defensive decks, this probably won't hurt at all. Starting with the hero to your left, each hero chooses Warp. So, it affects you as well. I'm going to give this a 7.5. Because it also affects you. So, you're going to be making a deck that definitely, you know, uses this to its advantage. Okay, it says if they choose War, the only actions they may play or activate during their next turn are Weapon and Attack actions. Oof, man. Yeah, that's a... Y'all tell me what y'all think about this War Monitor's Diplomacy, guys. That, that seems pretty brutal, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, and lastly, like these are just tokens down here at the bottom. These are just generic tokens. We have Poison the Well. This is a blue, so pitches for three. Zero cost generic instant. Okay, the next time a hero would gain health this turn, instead they lose that much health. Wow. That right there, guys, is absolutely brutal. I, I think this one here. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go with this card as like a nice seven out of ten. Because it's not gonna break any game. Certain decks don't even, don't even gain health, right? But the idea is the more defensive decks that might need to gain health in order to stay in the game so they can get all their combos off. Like, and you know, decks that run healing main board, right? Or at least sideboard, I don't know. Y'all know what I mean. This this just shuts it down, right? This, this just says, oh, you're gonna gain health? Okay, well, in response, you know, if they were at 20 health and like, I'm gonna gain three and go to 23, right? Well, no, now you're actually down to 17 and you just threw away whatever card you just used. Brutal. Really like this card. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. 7 or 7.5 out of 10. All right, guys. That's all I have to say uh, for now on, um, on on the Dust Till Dawn spoilers. Next video I do is probably going to be on Vincent. We're going to go over some of her stuff. The uh, Shadow shadow Rune Blade type stuff. Um, might do the Shadow Brute. I don't know. I, I like the Shadow Brute idea as well. Is it like with um, Levia or, or Livia? How do you say it? But I also kind of like some of this light stuff. It, it looks really interesting to me. Um, I am sad as a Viserai and Katsu player that I basically don't get anything this set. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not trying to be negative or anything like that. By the way, some of this art at the top here. Oh, man. Gorgeous artwork here. This is a, a real masterpiece. I know some of the art in, um, in this game in the past has been somewhat off-putting to me. Like, um, for example, Herald of Rebirth, right? Like, like this art is, I, I don't like this art um, in particular. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying I could do any better. I, I, I'm just simply saying that this isn't my style. And I would rather something be over the top realistic like this. Or I would rather be over the top simplistic like Figment of War right here. I love that. Th this I love. This I love. And then Figment of Tenacity. This I love. This is incredible. This is sensational to me. But sometimes I feel like with a lot of um, Flesh and Blood's art, it kind of hits this midway point like this one, where I, I'm just not happy with it, to be honest. Um, like, I don't love it personally. Like, the, War Tune Herald, look at this. This is incredible. This is out of this world good. Um, but like even like this card, for me personally, is not very good. Like his... It, I'm not going to try to get too technical. I'm, I'm just going to mention that... Um, I love art. Art is a big part of... See, look at that. This is awesome, too. I, I really like this one. But this, this one, for me, something's not right with the jaw or something. Uh, but anyway, still really cool. 
not trying to be too nitpicky. I'm just kind of mentioning something else. Um, and I, I do want to go over some of these light cars. These look incredible. I might have to go from like, you know, starting with this leader and just go straight down the line until I get to the next leader. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have like a perfect plan yet, guys, for these. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how I need to review the Dust Till Dawn stuff. Or excuse me, the Flesh and Blood stuff. And in this case, Dust Till Dawn expansion. So if you guys have any, um, if you guys have any um, recommendations or ideas for me, please, by all means, tell me. And again, I don't want to make it sound like uh, there's this has bad art in it. Like, look, dude, some of these look how look how incredible some of these are. This has like the Enlightened Strike vibe, right? This looks just like. Um, hang on. Oh, Render on there. Oh man, look at that! You got this like thunder, you know, like this Zeus style one here, and right here. Oh man, Lumina Lance, that looks so awesome. Like I said, some of the art in here is just so incredible. And then some of the others I just don't care for as much. You know, I'm just, oh, well, just talking, just being honest, being real with you guys. Y'all tell me what y'all think, man. Uh, tell me what y'all think about the art uh, in this set. I think overall, it's it's incredible. Look look at this one. Oh, oh man. Lay to rest. Yeah, we're going to have to mess around with some of this stuff, guys. We're going to have to mess around with some of this stuff. Really awesome. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed. Like I said, I've already rambled for too long. Let me get back down to the Viscerai ones and uh, end on that note. Uh, tell me what y'all thought about this Runic Reckoning and this Bequest the Vast Beyond. Those are the two I'd really like to know the most about that y'all thought, like what y'all thought the most about those. Because this, like I said, like I said uh, earlier in the video, this is going to kind of be part two to my Viscerai video because I'm a Viscerai main. Like that's why I play. The only other deck I have is Katsu. <laughs> so I didn't really get anything from this set, unfortunately. But that's not a bad thing. You know, I, I think I'm probably going to try Vinset this set, you know, get into it in that way in, in, uh, in this, exp you know, in this expansion. So, you know, there's always room for growth and to learn new things. But as far as this video goes, and as far as this set goes, y'all tell me what y'all think. What do you think about Bequest of the Vast Beyond? What do you think about uh, Runic Reckoning? Is it going to affect this ride moving forward or is it going to have zero effect? So, all right. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for sticking around this long if you did. And if you liked it, please leave me a, uh, a like and a subscribe. Um, and yeah, hope y'all enjoyed. All right, guys. Until next time. Peace.